Hello everybody, welcome to NCAA Football 13. No, not 14 or revamped, because I did not shell out $100 to get that game. I am just on the humble $25 uh, NCAA Football 13, and I'm starting a new dynasty today. I've been wanting to do this for so, so long, but I've never had capability to do it. But I got it all figured out now, and I'm excited to get a new series going here. Also, the first real thing I'm doing on this channel, I have another channel. If you're interested in checking that out, you can go check it out in the description. But this is my sports channel, my channel, just the stuff I do with just me in it. The other channels for me and my friends. But yeah, this will be all sports content and just different sports games and just me chilling, just having fun. And hopefully you guys uh, watch along uh, with me and just have fun with me. And uh, first off, I had to decide the team that I wanted to use for this dynasty. And with my overthinking ass, it took forever um, because I have, I overthink and I can't make a decision and I of course I'm a statistics guy and I went through and looked at all the statistics so I can kind of you know get a feel for you know a bad team I wanted a bad team because you know that's what you do in dynasty you want a bad team and bring them to the top right my basis for the team I picked was based off of like the team overall their overall bowl wins and bowl record in real life and then their all-time win percentage in real life just so I can like have some real life vibes mixed in with just the video game stuff. This team is 65 overall in the game. They're ranked 104th out of 131 FBS teams in all-time win percentage. They're 577, 632, and 50. Then they are ranked last in bowl games. They have never appeared or won, obviously, a bowl game ever. So, um, that stat will be figured out first season right off the bat. Gonna get six wins, win a bowl game in the Sun Belt. Easy, obviously. So yeah, here I am as the new UMass head coach ready to start off a new season. Let's go ahead and get into the roster real quick and give a quick rundown. I already inputted all these, uh, all the skill players into a spreadsheet because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a freak. I, I do a bunch of spreadsheet stat stuff. I'm going to basically follow along by myself because that's what I do with all the dynasties that I do by myself. But I'll, I'll try to update you guys uh, with the stats as much as I can. I could put some down in the description possibly or the comments or something just to keep you guys up to date too because I want you guys to be able to follow along with me as well. But as far as the roster goes, we have our redshirt junior quarterback Terry Edwards. He is going to be captaining the ship at least for this first year uh, it looks like, obviously barring any injuries. Um, our highest skill position is actually our uh, 69 uh, overall running back, Bruce Powers. Um, backed up by the 68, only one overall uh, behind him, Marlon Clay. He's a sophomore. Um, and then you got a couple. You got a junior and a freshman, you know, 60, 59. They won't be playing. Ernest Smith is just our 56 overall fullback. He'll be doing plenty of blocking. I don't think he'll get a handoff. Maybe some receptions because I actually unintentionally throw it to fullbacks a lot. And our wide receiving core is uh, led by Ryan Hunt, 68 overall. He's only 5'10". He's only a sophomore, though, so I think I could work him up to maybe even like a 75, which is pretty good for how bad we are right now. Um, and then behind him is Tariq Abrams. He's a senior, only 5'9". He's also 173. This guy is a floating piece of paper in the wind. I, I don't know. I might have to throw away from this guy a little bit. I don't know. I I he might. I'd be okay if he transferred. Um, the problem is, though, behind him is Ronald Neal. He's also so 5'9". I mean, he's got 17 pounds on the dude, but he's a sophomore. He's, I mean, we have the shortest receiving core I've ever seen in my life. He's a 62 overall. Behind him is Cedric Anderson. He's a senior. 6'2". Actually a guy over 6 foot. He's also 190. He's a 61 overall. Um, he is the second slowest guy, but so, if you were uh, assuming that uh, below him might be some somebody you recognize it, it is it's michael fucking jackson i don't know what are the odds that the generated names generate michael jackson but michael jackson is on our football team 6 2 2 11 he's a, a redshirt junior 59 overall i need this guy to become the best receiver ever because that'd be hilarious um i feel like i have to do something every time he gets a reception or something um behind him is raymond duckett he's a freshman six foot 200 pounds and uh, that's our receiving core, not the greatest, but yeah, we suck, so that's how it is. Gary Williams, he's a junior, 6'4", 250. This guy's a, uh, a beast. Um, uh, and then behind him is Matt Wilson, sophomore. He's 6'3", 240. So yeah, we got some pretty big uh, tight ends here, and then we got a 6'5", 250, Cornelius Bass.
ass. Uh, he's a 53. He won't play. So before I do the recruiting board, which I'm going to do, I'm not going to go through the whole recruiting process on here. My plan is throughout the season to obviously give you guys updates on the recruiting, but I'm obviously not going to put, like, I just sit, uh, really all I do is just sit here, listen to music, and just go through it, and it's pretty boring. It's just how it is. And then I'll give you guys updates on where I am with certain players, obviously. I'm going to keep you guys there. It's just super boring. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, let's see how much interest I can get. No, it's boring. So If you're used to NCAA 14 recruiting, I'm sorry. It is completely different. I've actually never played NCAA 14. I've never had it. Uh, I never got it back in the day, and it's like $100 now, and I'm not going to buy it because I like NCAA 13. It's fine to me. So uh, This is the one I always played back in the day. The recruiting is different so if you're not used to it i mean it won't matter because you're not going to watch it but it is a little bit different i will go ahead and do red shirts real quick i uh, might as well because you can kind of this is pretty easy just click on him brian Wright, he's a freshman he's not going to get a single snap this year because maybe if like one of these guys gets injured then it could you know he might get like like the third string will get like five like the whole year the second string will get quite a bit and obviously the starter will get a sh you know shitload so uh, but I'm going to redshirt Brian Wright. I'll keep the rest of them unredshirted right now. I could maybe do the sophomore or junior, but I plan on getting a better one uh, in recruiting anyways. So I think I'm going to redshirt Duckett because he's not going to play either. So I'll redshirt him as a freshman. Maybe he can end up getting somewhere. And the rest of these guys, I mean, maybe I could do Ronald. Uh, I could do Ronald Neal. We're already down to five. I think I could just keep it the way it is. Like I said, I'll probably end up getting some wide receivers too. Um, as far as tight end goes, I mean they're uh, all sophomores, so I could I could just do Matt Wilson, and then since the, I mean we'll just let them suck. It's fine, and then he could just be the backup. It'd be a crappy backup, but I mean he'll barely get any receptions anyways. He's the backup tight end, so I'm just gonna redshirt him. So those are just the skill positions. We can go through the rest of the roster. Um, people really just care about the skill positions anyways, let's be honest. But uh, you can kind of go along with me as we go through the rest. Um, 74 left tackle here. We got a 63 left guard, so the left side's decent. A 71, a solid uh, center. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Steve is going to play. I think I'm going to redshirt him. He won't. I don't think he'll play very much. We might need him next year because I might. i got to recruit a lot of people because everybody sucks so uh oh we already got i mean backup left end sucks though oh he's really bad all right yeah we'll just not yes we got our 70 right guard a 68 right tackle really our only really crappy lineman is a 63 left guard we got a 70 overall left end here um who is 63 right end 68 d tackle 62 d these guys suck dude this is terrible Javon Fuller, 61 overall. I think I'm going to redshirt Kevin Manning. I mean, I might as well. Oh, my God. Ain't that a breath of fresh air? Eric Butler, a middle linebacker, a 77. Forgot the last time I was actually this happy about seeing a 77. Um, I'm actually used to doing all of these. I've never actually done this. I always pick, like, a decent middle-of-the-road team, but it's, like, always one that's in one of the higher conferences is what I always pick. I've never played as, like, a Sunbelt team or something. So this is pretty new playing as such a bad team. 67 overall, Jason Patterson. Our corners, okay, they're not terrible. They're all in the 60s. I'm not actually going to redshirt any of them. I think we could have a decent uh, secondary with these guys. 69, 66, 62. And they're all, two of them underclassmen, one of them is a junior. So our free safety's a 72, Curtis Davis. That's not bad. And he's only a sophomore. This guy could maybe hit the 80s. That would be legendary. Um... So, our strong safety is a 75. We don't have a terrible secondary. Our cornerbacks aren't terrible. Free safety and strong safety, both, you know, in the 70s. And then, I mean, he is a senior, though. I'm going to redshirt his backup because I don't think his backup's going to play. 67 overall kicker. He's a senior. 76 punters, not bad. He's a junior. And that's it for the roster. So, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 70 pluses. Um, so, that's not bad. I'll give you guys a quick rundown of the recruiting board. It took me about an hour because it usually takes me a lot longer to set up the recruiting board by myself. I got a couple quarterbacks in here. I got Andy King and Eric Covington, a couple of three stars. I kept three star and below and then up to four stars, right? So usually what I do with my, like when I have better teams like North Carolina or anybody in a good conference, I'll do mostly four stars at the very start to kind of get them buttered up. And then the five stars, you, you got to just go straight after. 
this is the opposite since I suck. And I not a single team was interested, by the way. No green dots. I didn't get a single team that is interested. Okay, that is a complete lie. There was none before, but once I add them, then I guess they get interested. I had to just free ball everything, and what I did was I just got mostly three stars, and then like the four, they basically just switched roles, right? I gotta go after these four stars, and then I gotta, gotta, you know, I gotta get those three stars to commit like mid season or towards the end of the season or whatever, like off season. Three stars are my main goal here, so you'll see mostly three stars, and then some like one stars I'm trying to pick off and hopefully get some easy commits. So yeah, I have those a couple quarterbacks. Uh, I didn't do a running back because uh, our uh, my backup running back is 68. And he's probably going to get a lot of handoffs as it is, and he's only a sophomore. So I was like, at least at the very start, I don't need to just go for one. My wide receiving core, I, I at least want to get one of these five because I want to kind of develop one of these guys to be, like, really good, you know? If I can, like, if I can get one really good receiver a year, I can hopefully develop a really good receiving core in the future or at least have the one, you know, 70-plus overall guy, like mid-70s type of guy. Um, especially when I get these all fully scouted and know how good they are. I just want to get one really good receiver. And I got these five. Uh, we got, I believe, four. They're all, are they all four? They're all four stars. Okay, so I just went straight for four stars, and then I can, if I don't get any of them, I can go for some three stars. Because there's some good, there's some gems hanging in those three stars. But I got this tight end because there was five total, total prospects from Massachusetts. And that's obviously where UMass is so it'll give me a little bit of boost i needed four positions i needed guards centers um a kicker and then uh, i forgot the last one but uh, i got a bunch of guards here a lot of three stars and whatever i got four centers as this guy's a bust but a 64 for us is beyond fine so and obviously he can be developed we also needed a d yeah a guard center uh d tackle and then a kicker um I got a bunch of D tackles because obviously we have a bunch of D tackles and they all suck. And I scouted a, a, quite a bit for a lot of these, and the best we have is a 69. But I got four kickers, which actually almost might not be enough. I need to get a kicker because my guy's a senior. If he graduates, dude, I'm I'm screwed. Um, I believe so. Unless they just hand me one, like with 2K. If you don't sign enough free agents, they just give you them. But I don't think it works like that in this game. I might have to end up using my punter as my kicker, which would result in me not being able to kick field goals. And yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple. Uh, I usually just go after the team needs first, which maybe is a crappy strategy. I don't know. That's what I do. And then a little bit of stuff I might need, um, like skill positions is the most fun to try to get good skill position guys because that's who you're using. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start the season here. Uh, and get into the actual regular season. We can look at the preseason polls, um, how teams are looking before we start the season, and uh, stuff like that. All right, so about the only thing I really look at um, as far as preseason stuff is the preseason polls. There's preseason All-Americans and some other stuff I might peek at, but um, Bama number one, I mean, obviously. I mean, I might only point out, honestly, the, uh, the shockers of it, but USC, not a shocker. LSU... Oregon, Oklahoma, Georgia, Arkansas a little bit maybe. And obviously these change pretty wildly throughout the season. Um, but uh, Florida State, Michigan, West Virginia 10. Usually West Virginia is up there quite a bit. I don't know why they're so good in this game particularly, but they're always up in these standings or up in these polls. But uh, Michigan State, I mean a bunch of – Kansas State up here pretty high is kind of shocking. Uh, Clemson, uh, VTech, Wisconsin, TCU. Usually I'm not used to seeing them good in real life or the game. And uh, they're good in this game, and they're good in real life right now. So this is a good time for TCU football. But, uh, yeah, I mean, all this is pretty standard. I mean, Ohio State, Nebraska, Stanford, Boise State. Yeah, they're always around. Honestly, it's not even shocking. This is the same every time with the preseason polls. But it'll probably change throughout the season as well. Um, Texas, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, and the Florida Gators. Heisman watch. Sure, we can check it out real quick. So keep an eye on the quarterback. Uh, you have USC... A uh, cornerback is in the top five. So uh, Rashid Sutton, quarterback for LSU, uh, and then a running back from Wisconsin, a couple quarterbacks, Michigan and uh, Oklahoma. So in NCAA 13, the divisions were way different, and then basically I tried to just like, oh, well, it's, they're different now, so let me adjust them because you can do your custom conferences in these games, which is so cool. I love the customization of this game. I just do as much as I can of real life, which is like 90% of it, and then some of the stuff is personalized. And let's just go through it so you know what I'm talking about. And like I said, most of this is the same. ACC, the same thing. Big 12, the same thing. The Big East in real life is the American Athletic Conference, the AAC. Um, I literally, it's the same exact thing. It's just the Big East. 
There's 11 in here, just like real life, um, except it's just called the Big East instead of the AAC. So when you see the Big East, it's the AAC, American Athletic Conference. Big Ten, the same thing. I even changed it. It was uh, Leaders and Legends at this time, uh, but I'm allowed to change it to East and West, so it's even more like real life. And they're the same exact thing, just as real life. CUSA is the same thing. The MAC is the same. Um... MWC is the same. And when I say the same, I might be forgetting a couple of teams that are out of the game now. All the teams that are in the game are in that conference, right? Uh, and most of them, I think there's like a couple teams that are not in it. MWC the same, Pac-12 the same, SEC the same. The problem that I ran into is the WAC is not a conference anymore, right? So basically, you can have, you just have to at least have a one independent so I, but I wouldn't be able to fill the WAC conference because it's not a thing anymore. So what I did was I was like, Idaho is the only team in the game that I don't believe they're not even in FBS anymore. So I just put all the independents in real life in the WAC conference. So they're in their own conference. And then I put Idaho as the one independent since they're not even, you know, in a division in real life. And then a lot of the, like Sunbelt's way bigger now. It's got two divisions and I think a total of like 12 or 14 teams, but there's only seven in this game. But it's fine. I mean, the only problem that really arises out of this is Notre Dame and BYU were way better than the rest of these teams, and they always like destroy the rest of these teams, and we have to face them uh, both. So <laughs> it's gonna be terrible. But but that's just how it is for the first season. And then what happens is after the season, I will have this little. I don't. Want, I might even almost make it a show and have some fun with it. I basically compile all the teams and I go through the rankings. I go. There's the. There's the. Uh, here, I'll, I'll show you. But I go through the whole entire ranking, like 1 to 123, which is the amount in this game. All the conferences, and I'll, I'll specify this more afterwards, and I'll show you exactly how I do it. But just really quick, I have uh, good conferences, mid-conferences, and bad conferences. And you can probably figure out which is which. I'll explain which ones they are after the season. Not important right now. But 1 through 75 is good. 76 through 1, I think... 09. I think 76 through 109 is is mid and then 110 through 123 is bad. So then if you are in the bad conference but you're ranked 55th, obviously you should be in the good. So then you'll jump there and I'll switch them all around and conferences change each season so it stays fresh. And I mean they change in real life too. I'm just the one doing it with my own rules. So it's so personalized. I get to have fun with it. It's whether it's really fun for me. And I think it's kinda cool. So like right now, we're one twenty one. If we ranked one twenty one next year, we're not going anywhere. So we gotta get up there and uh that's kind of the part of it, right? So like we have a goal, right? So it goes by our rankings, which is going to be tough because it's all based off projections, which if we don't improve our roster, they're probably just going to project us low. So that puts a lot of weight on recruiting, right? So I'm like, okay, you know, I got to have a good season and then build a good future roster so we ranked high, we get ranked higher. And if I can get us up to like 108, right, in that threshold, of we can move up to a mid-conference and then we can move to a good conference eventually. All right, finally, we've done everything there is to do. I know this has been really boring, but it's the first episode. I just wanted to give a rundown on everything so you know exactly how this works, and I'm going to do this uh, recruiting. i got a couple weeks of recruiting here before we can finally get into some football. All right, so I finished up recruiting, so let's go ahead and take a look at the recruits we're kind of leading on so far. Um, not too much work done yet, and it is a big difference to be recruiting to um, players when your team's very bad than when it's very good. But you can see we're at least leading on this guard. He's a 69, and guard is one of our needs, so that's a good sign. Got this Eric Covington. He's 67, and he's a scrambler, so I can get a little mobile. We're first on him, so I'm going to keep trying to get him. And uh, who knows, he could be our starter in the future. I got five wide receivers that I'm going for. I told you I wanted at least one receiver, and uh, we're second on all of them except one. We're on first, so looking good on at least getting one receiver. We're leading on a couple of guards that are both 69, which is pretty solid for, for uh, our three stars, and then all the rest were pretty good on except one we're on sixth. So we do need a guard, so that's pretty solid. The centers, we were lacking. Um or we are lacking. I mean, we're going up, but we're still fifth and sixth, so I grabbed this. He's not very good, but we need a center, and I should at least be able to guarantee to get him, so at least we'd have a center for next year. D-tackles are all over the place. I just added a lot, so that's why they're on NA, but, you know, we're second and third on some. We're eighth and sixth. It's all over the place, so hopefully I'd like to get a couple D-tackles, though, so I'm going to have to keep uh, going hard on them. 
And then our kickers, I mean, we're on second for a couple, third and on a couple. Finally, enough talking. Let's play the game. Trust me, I didn't want to do all that talking either, but um, but I just wanted to make sure it was clear. But here we are, fresh start. It literally is a fresh start. UMass players cannot wait for their season opener against Northern Illinois. That is very true. I'm um, excited to finally get into some gameplay and see if we can start the season with a W. We're going to go and rock the classic roads. Um, as you can see, we're all uh, graded D on everything, which I've seen D minuses. So, um, I mean, D is better than D minus, I guess. They're all C plus. So, we'll see what happens here. Oh, great. And it's raining for <laughs> our first game. Dang it. That actually sucks because the rain actually does have a serious effect, especially in this game. And we're on the road, so that's just the cherry on top. But uh, uh, So Tails never fails, so we're taking Tails and we get it. Um, but we're going <sighs> to... Should we take it? No, we got to kick. We got to kick. I want the ball at half, especially since we're probably going to be down at half. All right, flag right off the bat. It's going to be holding because I told you. It, it, especially on kickoffs. Like, there's always holding on kickoffs for no reason. Uh, I'm not going to complain about it. I will take a penalty. Start them on their own 12. Man defense. That's probably a terrible idea because usually if you suck, you usually go usually go zone. But we're going to go man. Okay, terrible throw. See the rain. The rain, you know what I'm saying? Slip a little bit. That was probably a big gain because he had a foot or two on him, so... Oh, oh, pick! No! No! That would have been huge if we could get our first offensive possession of the year from their red zone. But we'll take a three and out to start the season. Hell yeah, dude. All right, we're going to fair catch it here. We'll take it from their own 50 to start our first offensive possession of the season. There might be a running back controversy this season because it's a 69 senior and a 68 sophomore. So if the senior doesn't really cut it, we're going to have to put in the sophomore. But we're going to start with a stretch to start the season. Powers is going to get about two there. Field. I hate tosses in this game because I feel like defenses read it so good, but um, I'm just going to run in. They're loading the right side. Um, get some blocks here. Ugh, this big ass D. Okay, we're going to lose one. So that will set up our first pass of the season. All right, we got a D pass over the middle, and we got that out route we can look for. A couple out routes. Oh, that tight end's wide open. Good throw. No! No! Oh my gosh, that would have been huge. Could have got a first down, kept the ball moving. It was a great throw, especially in the rain. They want us to bring pressure, so I guess we're going to engage eight here. Hopefully they don't get burned. That would be terrible. They're going to run it, though, and that pressure is going to do nothing. They're still going to get a gain of 10 first down. They're going to hurry up like most college offenses do, and I hate every single one that does it. Little shovel pass? What are you, Mahomes? All right, that's going to be a gain of four. We'll crash there. We'll send pressure, but we're still in zone. All right, he's going to hand it off. He's going to squeeze through and get to the 50. Oh, no. They're driving here. They're driving. We got to... They hand it off again. They're not going to... They're not going to hand it off again, I promise. I'm sending pressure. We're going to go back to zone blitz here. They hand it off again. Oh, my gosh. All right, we're setting pressure this time. Same formation. They're probably going to burn us, but I can't let them run on us the whole game. They're going to run it again. He's going to break a tackle. All right, he's going to get to about the 35 there. Yeah, they want us to send a lot of pressure. So we'll go engage A. We still have the deep ball covered, so they shouldn't get a touchdown. But this definitely looks like a run to the right side, if I had to guess. And it's going to... Oh, it's going to be an option. Oh, we did not expect that. No! All right, we'll take the quarterback down to the 15, but yeah, we absolutely crashed on that fake, and he just, that was a smart pull. I wouldn't even have done that. I suck at read options in this game. All right, yeah, needless to say, they're destroying us in the run game here, and uh, not much we can even do about it. We'll go man coverage here. He's wide open, but we'll tackle him short of the first. Forward progress, get him to the, about the six, I think, second and two. He looks to be shaken up a little bit. Yeah, look, look at my corner bag, dude. I know it's raining, dude, but that is a mean comeback route. Wow. And they're going to full start? I think it's full start. Take that. We need that. We needed a, we needed some laundry out on the field because we are on our heels right now. I'd rather them pass it for a touchdown than run it for a touchdown. I'm sending pressure. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. They bring motion. They're dropping back. Oh, no. Bring him down. Short. He's short. No shot. No Oh, no, I might have to challenge that. Nah, I think he got it. It was close, but I don't, I'm not trying to lose a timeout. Three downs here. 
I got six yards to gain, about five and a half. Oh, good pressure. Oh, little screen pass. That's going to get nothing. All right, second and goal. They've hurried up every single play. We'll send the corners. Oh, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Go cover four. Go cover four. It worked earlier. And we're going to audible to cover four. They're bringing motion. Oh, no, a little speed option. Bring no, I missed the tackle. I do that all the time. There's your, there's your first example. There you go. I always use her and then... Oh, I don't I get so it's it happens so fast there you here's a replay for you see I always I, I run past him I push X then he just misses the tackle we actually kept up with the speed option pretty well um but you know just missed the tackle I got a touchdown we're down seven nothing to start the game Powers on the return. He's our starting running back right now. We're going to get out to about the 25, I believe. All right. Uh, running obviously didn't work too well last drive. So we're going to pass it here on the first down. Oh, he's wide open. <sighs> a little misdirection. Powers. Good broken tackle. There we go. Okay, a little four-yard game. That's okay. All right. Maybe that triangle route will be open again. It will. He's wide open. He got him. Neal is going to get out past the 40. Huge gain right there. Dude, my quarterback's throwing dots. It's a good throw. Led him perfectly. Okay, this is solid. And I think he's only a junior, too, from what I remember. So, All right, first and 10 here. Now past the 50. We're going to run stretch. So we can get some blocks. We're going to take it inside. Powers is going to get out for a six-yard gain. Well, here we go. We're driving a little bit. Three down linemen. Now fake the pass. Run the draw. Good block. Powers is going to get all the way out to about the 25. Four, I believe. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I also think it's a good time for play action. So we're going to run some play action. I think they'll bite a little bit with how good our run game is uh, is going. As you can see, stacking the box quite a bit. They got four down linemen. All right, all right. Oh, oh, one. Good throw. Touchdown. First of the season, UMass. What a route. What a throw. Good play call on my part, not to toot my own horn. My controller disconnected right in the middle of the replay. That's my bad, but uh, here, you know what? Screw it. We'll go back. Why not make it a little fun here? Take a little replay review. Good play action. We can go over here. So, okay, now I didn't even notice our receiver, our other receiver slipped. So he's running a little wheel here. A great cut, and he just gets his ankles broken. He's wide open. A great throw in the rain by our quarterback. A little little wide shot here so they're getting pressure off the edge got plenty of time though great throw first touchdown of the season and we're about to tie it here seven two seven another holding call is what they're gonna get i believe here on this kickoff so they're gonna start back deep in their own territory once again last time they started from their own red zone um we got a three and out so hopefully we can do that again thing is if they can get a big gainer off the bat they're obviously gonna just start hurrying up, and they'll get us on our heels. But if we can stop them like that, get a big TFL, are they going to hurry up off of that? Exactly. Like, they're not going to hurry up there. So if we can, like, put them on their heels, they won't hurry up, and we can keep the control. You know what I'm saying? There's a science to this game, man. All right. Um, they're going to run another speed option. It got them their first touchdown, and he's going to break loose. And he might know we're going to get him down just before the 40. So that's a big gain. This time the quarterback, he didn't pitch that one. We got ourselves some hurry-up offense once again after that big gain. Um, first and ten. Yeah, they're going to hand off once again. This running game for them has been really good, but we're going to get them down for a TFL here. Not my choice. They're going to hand it off again. What a juke by their running back. That was insane. There they are. He's going to drop back. Over the middle, he's got him, and that's going to be forward progress for a first down. All right, uh, this is where I do say they will run it, so I'm going to run a blitz here. Uh, we'll see what they do here. They are going to uh, hand it off. He's going to break a tackle, uh, but he's only going to get about three yards. I mean, that's a solid gain, but... All right, we're going to send some pressure here off the edges. They got a third and two. Oh, they are. They, they are going to really show run, honestly. There's no way this is a pass. Oh, no, they're going to motion. Oh, no. They still hand it off, though. And that's a big TFL. Good shit by our defense. Fourth and four. And that should force a punt here to give us the ball back. Right, we're going to let this one go back into the end zone. And we'll take it from our own 20. All right, let's see if we can start a big drive here to get try to get our first lead of the season and start a new reputation in uh, Massachusetts football here. 
And that's not going to do it. <laughs> that's going to be a TFL. All right, if the run don't work, the pass will. All right, here we go. We're going to run slants here. They're going to get pressure, but we're going to roll out. He's wide open circle. We got... No, he drops it. Damn it. All right. Those are the tough ones that I really hate when you find... you get Like I said, you get that open receiver, and, um, and sometimes like that, you'll either make a good throw, but they still drop it. You know, it is what it is, though. Uh, third and ten. Third and long. Our running back slipping out of there over the middle. Uh, just for an extra pass, and I'm going to throw it to him in tight coverage, and he's going to drop it on contact. Those are the ones that I throw interceptions on, where I just get excited and throw it too quick, and then they'll, you know, cut it off and get a pick. But, uh, all right, so three and out there. The game's going to stay tied, and we're going to tackle them just before their own 50. We'll start their fourth drive of the game. Um, they're going to run another speed option. That's the first one that actually isn't successful. They'll only get one yard there deep, and they're going to fake the handoff play action, covering this open receiver. They're going to go deep to the sideline, but it's going to be out of bounds. So they're going to have a third and long here. A couple of corners coming off the edge, but I got a couple guys deep as well. So I don't think they'll run it, but... Oh, they will run it. That's going to be stopped there for about a gain of three, and it's going to be fourth and six, which should force another pun here. Actually, a pretty solid punt. The CPU never kicks that good of a punt, but that one's pretty solid. This Northern Illinois crowd putting a little bit of pressure on us, but we're going to give it to Powers here. Hopefully, we'll power through. We'll get an open hole, we'll get a big hole there, and we'll get eight yards off of that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to have this smash mouth football, and you just got to run the ball. So I think that's what we're going to keep doing until they can stop it. it scare me a little bit with this, uh, with this front, but uh, we're going to run it still. And a good block there. It's got some open field. Another big run there for Powers. I'm tempted for the slip screen, but play action would be solid here. Play action is the one that got us a touchdown, and we can afford to take a shot here on first down. So we're going to do it. I think we might try to go for Hunt here over the middle um, in this play action. Should bite there, and it's not looking too open. We got a holding flag. We'll just throw it to circle. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just got all twisted up in my words. That was a great throw, but obviously it's coming back with the holding call. That <laughs> freaked me out. That was such a good throw, dude. All right, well, first and 20 after that holding call, and we're obviously going to run it. I don't love the toss here. Um, we could pass it, but we got to get some of that yardage back, and oh, I thought we might have a little bit of... He doesn't have enough speed for that. He doesn't have enough speed to get to the outside, and that's why I don't love running tosses. Uh, we're going to lose three on that. Got some options here on this one. we got to get some of this yardage back. We always have our backup running back to check down to as well. Oh, no. That's a bad throw. No. What is that? What is that? I was actually excited because he looked like he dropped it. I was like, oh, sweet. But then he, like, Spider-Mans it before it hits the ground. Hold on. I think it was was it this guy coming up. Yeah, it was. Let's, let's take a peek here. Um... It, so he goes up for it, hits off his hands, great, sweet. Okay, look at this. There's no way he catches this, right? There's no way he catches this. This is an in incompletion. We'll have third and long, you know, take a deep shot. No. What is this? What is going on? What happened? He caught this with his thigh and elbow. What is that? So the ball is, like, look at this picture. Take a good look at this. It is at his hip, and gravity would tell you it's hitting the ground, Even especially in the rain. This ball is slippery, and then the next frame looks just as bad. It's like, no, he catches this. Turn completely does a 180. I can't do this very slow. Look at how quick this 180 is. He's here, the ball's there. 180. Now that's about 90. 180, catches the ball. Full motion here. Like, look at how quick it switches. Look at that. In one frame. All right, enough dwell on that. We turned it over. First and ten. Um, they're going to run it. Surprise, surprise, but I'm right there. They're still getting in a four, but right, hurry up offense. We're going to run cover four, drop some guys deep. Um, I know it's probably going to be another run, but I just don't want to let up a deep pass. Um, if they want to keep the run game going, I mean, eventually... Oh, pick! Pollard! Pollard interception! Take it to the house! Pollard to the sideline! No, Bonnie's gonna catch him! 20, 10, touchdown, pick six! And UMass has their first lead of the season off of a pick six from Pollard. Oh my gosh, he reads it so well. It was a little screen. I don't even think it was a screen. 
It might have been. It was just a little check down pass, and Pollard read it like a book and takes it to the house. Oh, my gosh. If our offense wasn't going to do it, our defense needed to do it. A huge turnover after our offense just committed one, and we will take the lead 14-7, to our first lead of the campaign. Remember his name. I don't think that'll be the only big play he makes this season. Um... Wow, that, that that was out, out of nowhere. I thought they were going to run it again after the four-yard gain, but I guess they just were thinking, yeah, we, we're going to run up, send up the pass, and uh, they threw a pick, pick six, and uh, another holding. You know what? I think I've learned by now we're sending some pressure. We're sending pressure here. They run it first time like every time. I know they could audible, but... Oh, no, it's empty. It's empty. It's empty. It's empty. Go to cover two man. Cover two man. Okay, they're not running anything deep, and he drops it, sweet. All right, we got bailed out there. I was a little scared because I didn't even notice it was empty. They're reading my mind. I, I think they might actually be reading my mind right now. I don't think I've called a single play right. Um, this has to be a run here. Yeah, this is a run. They're running back solid. Um, we're going to get them down for a three-yard gain, though. All right, third and seven. We got pressure off the edges here. Um, I don't think this will be a run. It's not. Oh, we got him over the post route, and he's wide open, though, on the sideline. All right, we got a backer blitzing here, but we still got three deep. It is. They're going to hit it off up the middle. Big play by our linebacker, though. He was our blitzing linebacker, and it's going to stop him for only a gain of one. Hurry up on this third down. This is a big play here. Um, try to stop him, get the ball back, and if we can get a little two-for-one here, take the lead. Uh, or uh, pat our lead a little bit, and then get the ball to half would be nice. I'm covering the deep ball. Ooh, I thought that might have been another pick, but... Good blocks, good blocks. He's got the outside a little bit. He's going to get about four. It's a solid run there. Oh, no, he's grabbing his ribs. That's not good. All right, Powers is down. Clay's going to come. Yeah, there he is. He's down. Out of screen a bit, but he is injured. A couple of running back checkdowns here. Yeah, I kind of panicked there. I wasn't looking downfield. I was looking at those running back checkdowns. It's all right, though. We got third and six here. He's out four weeks. No, that's not even our running back. Another guy's out four weeks. Who even is that? All right, third and six here. They're sending some pressure. Wide open. Got him. Circle. Hunt. All right, he's going to get out almost to the 40 there. Powers will return soon. So Powers is going to come back. That's solid. He's had a pretty good game so far. But Clay is in for right now on this uh, running back dive. Sending some ball. Wow, they sent a lot of pressure there. And he got smoked. But he's going to get back up, which is good. Uh, but it's going to be second and 12 here. Uh, we're definitely sitting him for the game right now. Uh, keep playing. Don't want to risk re-injury in the first game of the season. The only time I ever play them is if it's a really close game against, like, a, you know, in a big game. Or if it's, like, a bowl game or something, I'll, I'll play them. But uh, most of the time, I just sit them. Might look for this drag. We're going to roll out. The drag isn't too open. Oh, but R R1. R1 gave us a chance there, and I tried to get it to him, but it, it wasn't enough time. All right, we almost made a little play there, but uh, ultimately... Uh, gonna have to punt it away. We're gonna try to pin him here, um, but it's really tough in this game. So I'm just gonna send this, I guess. That's a solid punt. No, oh, see, it's so hard to control, and they don't do it themselves. All right, that's fine. They'll take it from their own 20, which is still tough. First and 10. Good pressure on the engage eight. Second and 12. Second and 12. We're dropping some guys deep. That was not the greatest idea because they're just gonna pick up 11 on that run. Bring it to third and short. They're not going to drain the clock anymore. They got him over the middle. That's a big gain. They're going to get out to the 45. They got a chance to try to tie it up here. We'll cover three here. First and ten. Pollard. Usering the one who got the pick six earlier. I'm going to let him have the deep route. Oh, I didn't even see the quarterback. I was looking deep. Dang, dude, this quarterback can run. All right, that was my bad. That was my bad. I should have kept my eyes on the quarterback. I was looking deep. I was a little afraid I might get burned. They're going over the middle. Intercepted. No. All right. Good defense, though. Good defense. It's going to force third down. They're going to go motion. They're going to go another speed option. I missed another tackle. Not okay. Oh, it's short. Oh, gosh. Bro. Once again, I missed another tackle on a speed option, and they have first down. At least it wasn't a touchdown this time, but it is first and 10, and that's two wide open routes. But he's going to overthrow it. All right. Two man cover the end zone here. They can have a run. They can have a four yard run right now. With 40 seconds to go in one timeout. We just got to cover the end zone. I think this might be a run. It will. They can have that. They can have that. Protect that end zone. Don't let them get an end zone shot here. He's going to drop back. 
to the sideline, and he's going to reach for the first, or not the first half, touchdown, and they're going to tie the game. All right, a pretty good two-minute drill there by Northern Illinois, and the Huskies are going to tie the game at 14 here just before the half. I might take a shot here and then just run the clock out. Uh, might as well at least take one deep shot. All right, another hold, man? Nah, I'm just going to have to run out the clock. All right, that will tick down to the end of the first half. Tied up 14-14, to a pretty solid game so far. I um, was expecting to be down a little bit, but there you go, 14-14 in the half. Um, expect to be down maybe a touchdown or so, but uh, but no, we are tied. We're fully in this game. All right, here we go. We get ball, start the second half, 14-14, to and hopefully we can take the lead here. Powers on the return. Let's just not hold. How about we just don't hold? There we go. See, we can get a return without holding. There we go. All right, good blocks, good blocks, except for that guy, but a broken tackle. There we go, good blocks. Okay, there we go. We missed one block there, but a uh, good broken tackle by Powers. They'll still make an eight-yard gain. I mean, second down, we can take a shot because I'm pretty confident that we can pick it up on the ground if we don't get it. Plus, we have a check down, so... Oh, my God, he's wide open, deep. Get to it, get to it. No! Oh, my God, overthrew him by a toenail, and that's going to bring up third and short. He had him burned. Please get us some blocks here on third and two. There we go. We'll go. Oh, it's going to be Clay, actually. Oh, no. What's the late flag? That was a late flag. Holding? That was so late. That was so late, man. They threw that after we had picked it up already. I feel like if you hold after they get the first down, it should still be a first down. That's stupid. I mean, you know what? We haven't ran four verticals yet this year. I actually like four verticals better when it's in trips, but four verticals is four verticals, so we're going to send it. Triangle might have a step here. Good throw! Good catch! Neil! Got it in the red zone! What a throw and catch! First down, UMass! Sometimes you just gotta send it. Sometimes you just have to send it. What a throw by your quarterback. Oh, that's, that is perfect. That is perfect. You don't get much better than that. Gonna give it to our boy Powers here. He's gonna bounce it out to the outside. I'll pick up about four there. Releasing field goal range. Let's just not... Throw an interception, all right? Touchdown, all right, play action. Oh, he's wide open. Throw it to him. Got it. Anderson is going to get into the end zone for a UMass touchdown. The Minutemen are up once again. What a throw by our quarterback. Um, that is his second touchdown pass of the day. Having a great first game. Oh, that's going to be another that's gonna be holding call on them. Get a little taste of our medicine. First and 19 for the Huskies. They're going to hand it off. No, they're not. It's play action. They got him deep wide open. No, I got burned. Oh, I got burned. That's a taste of our own medicine for sure. All right, first and 10 here. Huskies now in the red zone. And uh, we are on our heels here. But we're in cover three. Hoping to prevent a touchdown. And over the middle. Oh, almost intercepted once again. Oh, interception, Davis! Got it on the deep route. Take a knee, take a knee. Take it down, take it down, take it down. Or get tackled, get smoked, that's fine. All right, we should. <laughs> that was really weird. He just wouldn't knee it. All right, uh, strong safety, who's one of our only good players, is injured. I'm going to be honest, play. Like, this is the first game of the season, dude. It's a medium risk. The backup is a 55. But, yeah, huge interception there. They took it deep. We added in cover two, went right into our coverage. And second reception of the game here for the Minutemen. We're throwing it. Circle route. Can we go deep? Oh, he's wide open. Check down. Bang. Ross, first down. Minutemen. There we go. We're going to get out to the 35. All right, there we go. Uh, Powers is... Oh, no, that's a second. I mean, I know he's going to return soon, but still two injuries in one game. That's a bad trend. I'm uh, just asking for uh, for you know injury proneness. Um, but a big gain there for, I believe that was Clay. Second and one, this is where you take the deep shots. This is where you take the shots, and we don't really have a shot to take, so I'm going to throw it away. Smart football here by UMass. That's what we're bringing in. We're not making any stupid plays, all right? We just want to keep it smart, keep it simple, and uh, try to walk away here with a win. That's the only goal. Let's get a little play action going in here after that big gain. They should bite the run. They will, and we're going to drop back. We'll take a little check down because they got a lot of pressure, and Neal is going to get uh, the catch for a nine-yard gain. Should be pretty easy to pick up third down, and that's going to be wide open. He's got him, Abrams. Touchdown, Minutemen. And we're going to pad the lead to go up two scores. What a post route there. What a throw. It's a little scary. I thought the, <laughs> thought the safety might uh, undercut that, but just enough zip on the ball to get it through for the touchdown. And the Minutemen are going to go up 
28 to 14 in the third quarter. What a start to the season. I'm getting excited about this season. Uh, second and seven, they're going to hand it off. That's going to be a first down. Is that going to be holding or is that going to be a face mask? Uh, it's going to be holding. All right, sweet. So that's they're going to boo that. They don't like that, but we like it because it's going to be second and 16 for the Huskies. All right, second and 16, about two and a half to go here in the third quarter. And the shotgun for the Huskies and a little counter or a little misdirection, sorry, but that's going to be a TFL either way. Third and 19 here, third and long. All right, we're going to fair catch that because our blocking sucks. We'll take it from our own 40. All right, third and seven here for UMass. We're five for eight, which is pretty solid on the day. Um, crowd's getting loud. They don't want us to have it our tight end. We're going to, oh, he's going to get absolutely hammered. He's going to do a little flip, but he's going to get the first down. Uh oh, we got some pressure. We got some pressure. Got outside the tackle box. All right. All right, there we go. 28-14 at the end of the third. Up two scores here, and let's not choke. Get third and eight at the audible. Let's go. Let's go. Um, we'll just take the little down. That dude is huge. Is that a lineman? <laughs> is that a lineman, or is that our other tight end? If that is a tight end, he needs a position change. Wow. This dude is hefty, man. <laughs> wow. He's got both the knee braces on, as a lineman would. Um, and he got the hands that a lineman would as well. <laughs> I do take the blame there for having such a bad drive there. Should have been a little bit more aggressive. I usually get too passive late games when I have the lead like this, but... Hopefully our defense can come up big here and get a stop. And yeah, they're going to go for that. And there's something. No, he's going to bat it down. All right. 745 left to go in the ball game. And they're going to go shotgun. They're going to hand it off, try to pick up some of this yardage, but that's a huge TFL loss at two. Make it third and 12. And they're inside their own five. They might even just run this, just not trying to throw a pick or anything. And they're going to drop back, and we're going to get a safety. That is huge. I thought it might be a possibility, but I always get excited. That is a lineman. I always thought this might be a possibility once they got there, uh, once they got inside their five. But uh, I didn't want to get too excited because you know, they usually just throw it away or something. But that time they did not. We got the safety. This has had everything. This first game has had everything you could ask for. It's, uh... Oh wow, what a catch! It means a loss, but. Slip screen there, get a block, take it to the outside. That's a lot of open field. That's a lot of green grass. I went for the spin move, but uh, yeah, we get tackled out. A huge gain there for Powers. I'm tempted to take a deep shot, but actually no. Let's run it because we can take it a three-possession game if we get a field goal. And we're probably going to miss because of the rain, but if we can at least get it in range. You know, it's 48, which is pretty long. If we can bring it down a little bit, then that would make it more realistic. We'll take the run here. That's a big hole. It's going to be holding, though, unfortunately. They want us to go for it, which is interesting. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I mean, I can't let the CPU want to go for it. I don't. Okay, I'm going for it. Um, it's probably the right decision. A oh, wide open in there with a check down. We'll take the check down. Ross has got it. And I don't know why I ran out of bounds there, but we got the first down. That's huge. Up to 264 yards on the day for Terry Edwards. He wasn't looking too good in the first half, but uh, he's definitely looked a lot better here in the second half. All right, we're going to take this clock down a bit. Oh, Powers got an abdominal strain on that. He's out for the ball game. That's his third different injury of the game, and this time he's out for the game. I know there's only four minutes left, but still... Um, that's not, that's not a good sign having your starting running back be out like that. But Clay is pretty fast. That's the one thing I'll say about Clay. Um, he is, I mean, he literally he is a speed back, so obviously he's just faster. But it feels better a little bit in that sense. But Powers, I feel like he breaks tackles better. But and Clay probably will get the start for the next two years because I'm not recruiting any uh, any different running backs uh, to take a spot. But this time he's gonna get in there to the one. And he's down. Oh no, dude, this is not good. All right, with that touchdown, we will all but seal the game now with a three-score lead. Um, about to be up 37-14. to 14. You really couldn't ask more from the Minutemen in this ball game. Um, this had such a good game on every aspect of the game. I mean, defense has been insane in all aspects. Offense with running, passing. I mean, we've had our big plays passing, you know. We've, uh, we've ran the ball great. I mean, we've played defense. we got picks. You know, we got a safety. I mean, we've done everything we've needed to do. We've all but proven that, you know, we can do everything. So the only bad thing it does is leave no excuses for us to be lacking in any part of the game for the rest of the season. But then again, we have to face Notre Dame and BYU. Those are going to be our two big tough games. But 
Other than that, I mean, I think we can run through a lot of these teams. Northern Illinois hasn't given up just yet, though. They're going on a bit of a drive here, trying to bring this down into possession once again. And a big tackle there by our defense. Uh, he went for a little bit of a flight there. Our tight end had a little flip earlier, but that dude flew a little bit after that tackle. He's going to roll to his right. He's got nothing open. We need to get some pressure on him. He's going to go deep. And it's not going to get there. It's going to bring it to fourth and sixth. But they're four down territory, so we got to play some defense here. Run a little, they run a screen on fourth and six, and it goes absolutely nowhere. And that's going to bring it back uh, into our possession here. Uh, two minutes, 23 seconds left in the ball game. Uh, let's just try to run out this clock. Take home our W. Go up 1-0 on the season. All right, now first and 20 instead after that holding call. We'll take another run, though, and we're going to get some space. Ross is going to run it up for a 19-yard gain to make it second and one. Who cares about a holding call? Ross is still going to take the outside there and get a big gain. I keep it realistic so I don't just pad on here in the late game in garbage time. I just keep it realistic. I run out the clock. Keep it obviously like I could try to throw deep for a touchdown, but I also could throw another pick knowing me, so that would ruin it as well. But um, but at the same time, I mean, if, I break a, <laughs> if I break for a big gain here, I'll take my touchdown. But all right, it should be the last play of the ball game. Ross gets pushed out. He's going to get a gain at Sue. And we'll run the clock down. Luckily, he will get back up, which is unlike our other running backs. But And there we go. That is the ball game. 37 to 14. UMass will get the dub. I'm serious, man. You couldn't have asked much better from the Minutemen here in this game. Look at that. Look at that huge 37. Only gave up 14. You know, our offense went big. Defense, uh, you know, kept the score low. You know, there's the play of the game. I mean, the pick six, I mean, absolutely crazy. I was not expecting that. It was looking a little scary. They're about to go 14-7. Next thing you know, we're up 14-7. And that's why uh, it's part of the reason you love football. You know, stuff can change in the blink of an eye. Hopefully next game uh, we'll have some good weather. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's another thing. Even with the weather, you know, we still came up big and got a dub. So, you know, player of the game, Terry Edwards, 15 for 27, 264 yards and three touchdowns. And fighting for a spot here, really trying to prove that he should be the, the starter here and always. All right, you already know we have to check the final stats of the game here. Terry Edwards, uh, 15 for 27, 264 yards, three touchdowns, only one interception. I told you it's rare. One interception. You know, I won't really get away with zero, but I mean, one is solid. Um, running, uh, actually didn't have a crazy game. I know, I mean, to be fair though, add all those up, that just, you know, that's actually better though, because when you get solid games from three different running backs, that's pretty good. Um, that just shows how deep our running backs are. You know, Powers, 15, 56 yards. Um, Clay, 8 for 40. Ross, 4 for 30. I mean, everybody was just getting a piece of the pie here in the running game. Uh, Ross did have the one rushing touchdown of the game. And I think we possibly found our number one receiver. I know it's the first game. Um, and, you know, you don't, that's the thing. You can't always go by overalls to get your number one receiver. Uh, and if you go by the stats, Ronald Neal is our guy for catches for 119 yards and a touchdown he had a great game uh bruce powers our running back had four catches for 40 yards he was he was doing it all he was running he was catching only 56 yards in the run game but 40 yards and uh in the passing game is solid too with one drop marcus ross had two for 25 williams two for eight Abrams had one catch for 34 yards, uh, Cedric Anderson one for 16, Hunt uh, one for 22, and Carrington just had the drop. He was! He was a tackle! He was a right tackle! I don't know why he was running or he was running around on that play, but but that's funny. Uh, we got to confirm here. He's a 56 overall. I usually never look at team stats, but why not just take a peek here? Uh, they actually beat us in first downs. Total offense, we did have them, though, 406 yards. The same amount of rushes. Uh, they had a, actually a some more yards on rushing, um, same amount of TDs rushing, same amount of completions, but different amount of passes. Um, we had three touchdowns, they had one. Honestly, if you look at the stats, it's a pretty even game all around, uh, except for the scoring. Um, if you take away the garbage time touchdown and the pick six, I mean, you know, it's actually a 23 to 14 ball game. So, you know, I mean, you know, and, and then you have the safety too, and then take away the safety, 21-14, obviously you can't just sit here and take away everything, it's not how it works, but if you just go by just regular, you know, conventional drive touchdowns, then, I mean, it's a totally different game, so, but guess what, you know, make the least mistakes, you usually win the ball game, and that's what we did, and we got the dub. 
And that's going to do it here for week one in UMass football after a big win against Northern Illinois football, 37-14. to 14. I hope you guys really enjoyed this game and enjoyed this video. And if you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and comment. And I hope you guys uh, come for the next one and the next football game. Hopefully it's just as good as this one. I appreciate you guys being here, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.